I want my to, you know, uh, to uh, so give me answers of certain questions. So, so uh, my when we were studying, uh, like today's topic is cultural uh, barriers, how it's affecting uh, the business and all. So, my when we were studying in at uh, University College Dublin, we have classmates from uh, from Germany, we have classmates from Ireland. We have classmates from USA, we have classmates from China, and uh, like you have classmates from India, I have classmates from Vietnam. And we were used to do the group work uh, and many meetings together. So is, is there any instance comes to your mind when, when you, uh, you know, <laughs> when you felt uh, like uh, the meeting is going tough because, because of cultural differences if, if you can share any any of the instance your experience yeah, yeah. so uh, yeah when you study in the university college dublin you know like you say that you have a chance to work in team also i think that in that situation i myself at the first time i have a lot of difficulty working with people from many many country and for me, you know, that we are Vietnamese, so we are tired, quiet in all situations. And especially when I, I have a good work with a student in entrepreneurship course and student, a Germany student and, you know, student from the United States, they are tired, tired of talkative, you know. So it's just, I feel like I, I cannot contribute anything to that and they keep talking, keep talking. And I, I feel like as a student, only student from Asian countries have, you know, a lot of difficulty. So, yeah. So oh, right, rightly said, and thank you for sharing your experience. Now let me let me share my experience. When I had my first group meeting, and and it is for all of you to know, I, in my group there were like a group of around six people, and we have assigned a, a group project by by our instructor. And in that six people, uh, two were from Germany, one is from Ireland, and uh, one is from uh, USA, and I, I was from India, and one more I, I forgot the nationality. I guess from France or somewhere. Okay, uh, so when we when we were planning for group meeting, first of all, there was a hassle in 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 planning for what time we should meet. Like like the German was very much uh, you know uh, they were saying okay keep keep meeting in the afternoon hours because uh, after that we will wind up our uh, you know work uh, till till five or, or five or six. Uh, Irish was uh, a little bit. He said, "Okay, keep keep meeting. It's it's a group meeting. It's a meeting of uh, we all. So let's keep it in the evening sometime and uh, have a nice, you know, have a <laughs> uh, tin of beer and then we will sit together. But at the same time, I I was I was thinking, okay, let's let's finish it up in the morning and then we will uh, I'll go to my my work because I was doing the part time job that time. So." And when, when the meeting, we have we have scheduled meeting at around like 2 p.m. afternoon. And what happened when we have scheduled meeting? The Germans was very apt and, uh, and they, you know, uh, came on time for, for the meeting. Uh, like, uh, like the meeting was about to start at 2 and they, they, they were there at 1.55, five minutes before. Uh, but uh, uh, like uh, I also reached around like two, two ish, and but uh, others were not on time. And when we were discussing things uh, initially, it it was uh, hard to understand the accent and the English of each other. And few of them were not understanding the English uh, English at all. So so that was the problem. So uh, so while while doing the group meeting, a, a small group meeting, we faced these these many problems. Slowly, as as the time passed, we we you know uh, got to know about each other, and uh, then the, then the things were sorted out uh, because because we were able to understand each other. So when when you talk about cultural barriers from the you know from the perspective of business, how how it affects business, it affects a business a lot. Now nowadays, what we are seeing nowadays, we are seeing like diverse workforce, uh, you know, uh, people uh, uh, from different uh, communities, different nationalities, religion, age group are working together. 
those those people are working together and in 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 one team so so uh, first of all it is very complex to work with your own country mm -hmm. people but it is uh, further more uh, complex to work with another country's people and then accordingly adjust uh, yourself to uh, according to them like uh, i hope you you can see my screen there's a news article coming on my screen a generation grows up in china without google facebook or twitter today i'll only discuss certain papers and articles and all like uh, what this article is saying hong kong we belong 18 who lives in uh, southern chinese city of Luzio likes uh, basketball hip hop music and hollywood superhero movies he plans to study chemistry in canada and when he goes to college in 2020 what happened mr way is typical of chinese teenager in another way and two and he, he has never heard of google or twitter he once heard of facebook though it is maybe may like baidu and he asked one rec uh, recent afternoon referring to china's dominant search engine a generation of chinese is coming of age with an internet that is distinctly different uh, uh, different from the rest of the web so so a person is in is is in his teenage and is looking to you know uh, study in canada and and the age 18 and is looking to study in canada going canada from china and imagine a people at the age of 9, 18 he didn't heard about google twitter have only a, uh, you know uh, only glimpse of facebook and all because because when you are in china you have a censorship over facebook twitter google and all and they they are they are working on their own social media platforms so so the first cultural barrier it's very much uh, you know uh, visible here when when any business expatriate or any company enter in a country like china so they they, they believe or or they expect them in today's era social media and social networking sites are very much used for marketing and for business for promoting your own business promoting uh, promoting the business of you know promoting your products services but if if you are in china you need to use their uh, their social networking sites at the, at the same time uh, you uh, if if you are in china you, you have a search engine baidu gnoxy connection they you know they usually expect a, a, a gnoxy a, you, you should be apt in understanding uh, gnoxy connections and all when, when you are in china so so imagine imagine a person uh, like uh, like me if, if uh, working in india and very much uh, uh, very much you know uh, familiar with whatsapp Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and, and I was doing my business very well and floating my products all around the world through these networking sites, through these social media sites. But suddenly I, I entered in Chinese market and uh, I was not able to assess my Facebook and all. So, so it's, it's a big uh, barrier for me, big cultural barrier for me. At the same time, I don't know Mandarin Chinese language, and when when you are in uh, China, they they prefer you that you you should know their 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 language. India India is a little bit uh, flexible here. Like the uh, official business language of India is China. Oh sorry, official business language of India is English. So if, if you are in India, you have different different states. Every state has its own regional language. But at at a at a at a business level, uh, in educational institutes and all, we prefer talking in English and all. So it, it is very much easy for us to you know uh, as as an Indian uh, fellow to adjust ourselves our business in country like UK or country like USA, Canada, etc. But when you are going to China, they expect you to know their language so language is creating a barrier at the same time today in today's time social networking sites are creating a barrier if, if you are in china no doubt you will be familiar after a certain period of time but till the time you don't know those things it will be difficult for you and what you know what what this thing invokes in you it invokes in you like uh, 
uh, you should be partner with with some local chinese so so that you can you can you know forego these initial hurdles even if if you want or you don't want you have to be partner so now the implications of growing up with this different internet system are state starting to play out many young people in china of facebook are creating a gulf with the rest of the world and accustomed to the home group apps and online services may appear uninterested in knowing what has been censored online they, they don't know even what has been censored why it has been censored so these trends are set to spread china is now exporting its model of censored internet to other countries including vietnam tanzania and ethiopia such outcomes are the opposite of what many in the west anticipated could be the effect of internet so uh, to to an extent if if all the countries will start you know behaving in the same manner and if we will not come on the global platforms imagine india have their own social media apps india have their own search engine uh, uk have their own search engine social media apps china have their own vietnam have their own how much time it will it will take a businessman to adjust himself or herself according to to that country's situation so this is uh, this is one of the concerns so that's uh, that's what i want to give you initially that's what the my, you know the purpose of my lecture with you today to understand how how cultural barriers are affecting business so first and foremost cultural barrier is is language barrier at the same time we can we can discuss other socio cultural barriers as well let me share with you another research article just wait a minute okay so i'm sharing with you all one of the case study written by me and it was uh, published in scopus in 2020 okay how uh, cultural similarities help uh, show me's journey in india a roller coaster ride uh, do uh, do all of you know redmi show me from which country this this company belongs to any one of you from china right yeah very good right it is it is from china and it it has a tag a tag line also that me has been called apple of china they they are so famous and they are they are providing the smartphone at at a much cheaper rate in comparison to apple and with with good features so <clears throat> show me uh, or rate me whatever you say entered in indian market in 2014 after china india was the most important market for show me with the help of this case the authors will discuss about the market entry and the initial success of show me in india culture plays an important role for any foreign market player in this case there will be discussion on cultural similarity between india and china too slowly and gradually xiaomi become the most dominant player in the smartphone segment in india with the help of this case the author will explain uh, with the help of this case the author uh, will explain ma uh, market entry strategy unique business model of the company that helped it to gain maximum market share this case can be useful for management students as well as professional to learn about business success of xiaomi and the complexities of indian market culture and its implication are crucial for xiaomi to move to next level so why uh, xiaomi has opted out you know to uh, to expand in its business in india not not any other country now as as culture is is a barrier the cultural similarities can also 
be important and prolific for your your business now let me quickly move to a paragraph Xiaomi took the decision to enter in India because the host country has cultural similarities with the home country. When when you compare, uh, you know, the culture of uh, uh, China with the uh, with the UK, USA, Canada, there, there's a uh, there's a strong uh, what you can say. Uh, there's a wide. Uh, gap in culture. In the last class, I've, I've shown you how street cultural model and all uh, power distance collectivism. But when you talk about India and China, let's let's see to it on off street once again and try to understand it. Let me open it. Wait. Street cultural dimension. There is a okay. Sharing my screen once again with all of you. Okay, now if we are taking India as one country, China as another country. UK, United Kingdom, and the third country. So if, if you see the scores, power distance, India and China, more or less similar. Individualism, India is at 48. So it again, it is a collectivist country because the collectivist score is 52 and China is at 89 in, in uh, you know, uh, as per, um, no, China as per collectivism, is 80 because individual score is 20. So both India and China, again, a collectivist country. And UK is different, 89 for individualism. Masculinity, again, all three are same. Now, long-term orientation, uh, or like China, India and UK are same, but China is a little bit on a higher side in uh, orientation, though if it is more than 20, then all three nations belong in long-term orientation. But slowly, slowly, India is becoming short-term oriented country. You can see the score is 51 for long-term, then it is 49 for short-term. So why why show me that, that time, you know, uh, that is the reason that's why they have decided to enter in, uh, you know, Indian market because they, they want to go into such market where uh, uh, they will find the cultural similarity with China because it, if, if they will go in some other complex market, first of all, they need to manage their sales. At the same time, they need to manage the culture. Again, uh, going back to the case study. Okay, so Culture can be defined as the way of life, behavior, pattern, attitudes, and preferences and behavior of people in the country. Indian culture has many simil uh, similarities with China because both Indian and Chinese show high respect to the elders. The business etiquettes are similar because all the power rests with the top management in both the countries. I hesitate to say no in both the countries like China and India to, to, their, you know, uh, to their top officials. India and China are the examples of high context culture because people uh, often rely on indirect communication through various body language and other channels. Both both countries believe in you know 
in india it communication both countries believe uh, for respect of elders and there is a top uh, top down uh, you know top down approach of decision making whatever has been coming from top uh, the people from bottom have to follow that thing the number of people belong to middle level income is also high in both the countries so they have seen that that aspect too purchasing power is more or less limited in both countries people share their preferences and choice with the friends and neighbors and family families and relatives collectivism is more in china in comparison to india but india provide a market preference in which people of different religions choices and language now there is another cultural barrier which comes uh, you know into existence is religion how religion is affecting the international business religion is an important aspect of of culture like when when you talk about india in in my last class also was talking to you when when you talk about india people in india you know are like 80% or more than 80% majority in india uh, belongs to hindu uh, hindu religion when when you talk about uk usa the mostly uh, there are like christians talk about pakistan mostly they are like muslims so religious aspect you also need to take care of uh, let me share with you one story uh, like magdi tried to enter in india magdi is uh, doing a uh, very good business in india and magdi when while he, it was entering in india 1999 or 2000 or so they they were selling a beef burger and it was their one of the premium product and where they have launched the same in indian market as well but they, they didn't notice that thing that it it will hurt the religious sentiment of the most you know uh, uh, the most population in india is mostly the population in india is coming from hindu religion so they have faced uh, trouble initially they they are uh, you know the outlets have been outraged by by the uh party workers political party workers and all people didn't like them what what they were selling because it it uh, they were hurting the sentiments so uh, when when you talk about socio cultural aspect you need to be intelligent in in reading the sentiments of of a uh, country's people as a as an international uh, business uh, manager or the international market player you should be you should be intelligent enough to understand the psychology understand the religious sentiments understand uh, no, you don't need only you are not only there to understand the needs and wants of the and the preferences of the customers you also need to understand the psychology behind it in every country there is a different set of people and with a different set of people there is a different set of psychology altogether so the indian market provides more option to the smartphone seller so china had a uh, that time uh, xiaomi as as a, as an option to go for singapore market go for uk usa the whole world was open but they preferred india do there are cultural dissimilarities between yeah. india and china like i said uh, social media those are entirely different at the same time language is different search engines are different but even in that dissimilarity they they you know they have seen uh, some more similarities which they have uh, they they would have found difficult in in other nations now what is the initial success of xiaomi in india why it was so successful that it it become one of the dominant market player in india it it has affordable pricing so porters argued about generic business strategies to gain competitive advantage in the business so there are two basic strategies in business low cost leadership and differentiation so xiaomi focused on uh, low cost business strategy to achieve success in indian market all the success of Uh, Xiaomi is attributed towards cost leadership strategy. So they they have seen this thing like both the countries, either it is India or or it is China, both the countries are run by cost leadership. If if you can sell the product at a cheap uh, price, you will found more number of buyers. This this is an aspect of you know you can say purchasing aspect in both the countries were similar. So the major. 
factor behind the success of uh, Xiaomi phones in Indian market is the affordable pricing of Xiaomi phones. And Redmi is selling its phone near to its actual cost of the mobile phone. So the cost of devices is, is not giving higher profit margin. They were happy to, uh, not to take higher profit because they were actually setting up their base in that market. They have a unique service business model. They have a market uh, strategies of uh, Xiaomi in India. What were the strategies? Xiaomi has adopted a divergent market strategy to capture customers in Indian market. Most of the social networking sites like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram are banned in China. Indian youth is very much attractive and active on those sites. So look, look how the company has adjusted itself. Xiaomi accepted this fact that, okay, these, these uh, channels, social media, networking sites are banned in in china but okay they they didn't take it for granted they started adopting that thing as they entered in in a new foreign location so the company marketed its product through software like through facebook and other social networking sites because they have to capture the customer the ceo of the company believed that the word of mouth publicity by satisfied customers can help in creating positive vibes in the market and it is the cost effective way to market the product the company is successful in establishing a two way communication with the customers through social networking sites xiaomi is selling at a lower price and it does not spend dollars on marketing with unique business model they were selling it through online exporting they don't have you know their own physical stores in india that time when they entered through only through the help of exporters they were selling their mobile phone so this this was a good uh, thing global ambition and all uh, let me quickly go to another article because i have less time also need to leave you by 12:15 There's one article I'm, I'm sharing one section of the article with all of you. Social cultural factors affecting immigrant entrepreneur uh, enterprises. There are many, many entrepreneurs who, you know, settle themselves out in foreign countries as an immigrant and they start working in this, in those countries. This, this, some immigrant entrepreneurs trying to locate themselves in England called Shire one of the rural county in UK, uh, they, uh, what, what difficulties they have faced. First of all, they don't have immigration state. Uh, they, they need to be identified by immigration status only. And, and which is actually uh, not helping them because if we, they would have positioned themselves uh, 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 a person from the local economy, they, there would have been many advantages to them, but not as an immigrant. At the same time, what uh, I'm just quickly uh, going it through. Perry's model and much literature evidence suggested that the social cultural factors are among the poignant factors affecting immigrant entrepreneurs. Uh, do let all confirm religion and language are critical. As I was uh, talking with you, religion and language are very critical social cultural factors which affect marketing communication. <clears throat> how how you will perceive the you know the customers from that market. Understanding customer needs and size of market lifestyle, buying habits, stereotype behavior. Certain customer have, have their stereotype uh, thinking. They don't want to purchase from you know uh, a, an outside brand. They are very much comfortable from their own country brand. Mandy and Hekole found that ethnicity and lack of cultural capital are vital determinants. Now uh, let let me give you give you an example of Indian entrepreneur. I I don't know name or not. There's a, a brand in India called Patanjali. P A T A N J A L I. Patanjali. Patanjali has been started by Baba Ramdev, the owner and founder of Patanjali. And during this COVID time, it 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 gained a lot of importance because they are actually ma making Ayurvedic product. Ayurveda coming from uh, right from ancient indian uh, times and uh, following rituals indian rituals and all so they they are making medicine using indian methodologies and all indian ayurveda and all during covid time people started uh, in india people started believing a lot in yoga and now uh, uh, around this uh, the patanjali company saw a great opportunity there 
they have made several products not only for indian customers they have made their product you know started selling it uh, they were selling it before also they have started selling those ayurvedic uh, product with much uh, precision or with much uh, uh, much speed in the outside market because there was a there was a thinking going on in the air it are very much beneficial when it comes to go uh, you know getting relief from covid 19 pandemic and all so there is a cultural entrepreneurship too and the, uh, the beauty of the cultural entrepreneurship is that you can take your culture to the other countries by introducing those things in the products and services okay so i'll not take much of your time as i have 4 minutes left for 1250 if any one of you have any questions you can ask me If anyone has any question, you can ask me because I need to wrap up the class in another four minutes or so. Thanks for sharing your articles. So, anyone in class have a question for him, please? So, you talk a lot about like the cultural factor effect on immigrant, right? Businessmen. So, could you share with us how how a manager could learn about how, how a manager could learn mm -hmm. about the culture of a country before entering mm -hmm. that? By which way? <laughs> Yes, that's a very good question. Uh, like uh, many expatriates, also face problem while uh, placing uh, when 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 they enter in the host country. I always suggest, or as a consultant, I always believe it is the responsibility of of the company, whichsoever is you know, if if the con uh, company is setting its base in the another host country or even sending their expatriates, it is good that they should have been given a cultural training. we all have different different kinds of training when we join the organization but in today's era we are working in the different different countries so the companies should implement cultural training as an important and integral part initially and when when somebody is going for foreign uh, you know uh, uh, foreign assignment they should have given those those training at the same time in today's era it is very much easy to learn about culture do cultural dissimilarities dissimilarities are there like when i was a student i was looking to study abroad i used to talk a lot of students from uh, you know ireland so those social media networking sites are also uh, a good platform to learn about different different cultures now one can one can learn uh, the, uh, now you are living in a world of social media youtube twitter everything is there so it is it is your responsibility uh, as an individual if you are trying to place yourself in a foreign country and if if a, if a company is trying to place you they should give you cultural training it it will be good i think that cultural training is important and information from the internet is important but i believe that as long as the manager embeds in that culture they can like have a fully understanding of that culture because there are many parts that that need to be fired on the internet i believe so it yes. takes a long time to understand fully about that culture yes yeah. so i'm waiting for a question from student it's not maybe great to just tell me or yeah or anything uh asking anything about culture cultural barriers in type of culture or international business or even the case of vietnam uh, you know so anything about india i think india for me is very interesting uh, i i would like uh, to invite you all to once uh, you should try to come and visit uh, not only india try to visit different different countries it will improve your cultural intelligence exactly. like in the in the last last 5 years or so i have been visited like around 5 6 countries again going hungary hungary in the month of may i have an a conference in the in hungary location so try to improve your cultural knowledge exactly okay.
So it's uh, 1250. Uh, so if you have anything, uh, you can type on the chat box, guys. Just, uh, just wait a, mo a moment. I, I think that the questions on the student side uh, rather than me. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm just waiting. Okay. I guess, uh, okay, yes, you have written some. <laughs> In the case of Sami is not familiar with this and when talking about this. Do you know any Vietnamese in Vietnam or any Vietnamese comedy in your country? Any Vietnamese community? No, I, I don't know any Vietnamese community. But I'll, uh, this, this is a good. Uh, uh, you know, question raised by you, I'll try to learn uh, which Vietnamese con uh, community is working in my country, especially in the, like I'm living in the city capital of India, Delhi. So there will be some Vietnamese uh, community working on. Okay. So just um, ask some question. Vanang or Thuan, please, question for him. Uh, Swan. Ian, where are you? Ian? I think it's just, just a little bit here, so it's already one in every, I guess that everyone 